Hey guys, my name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. I am so happy to have you here today. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some fun Halloween DIYs with you. Some are new, some are from previous videos. So I guess this is a compilation of sorts. But if you are new to my channel and like what you see, please consider subscribing. Also giving me a big thumbs up really helps me out here on YouTube. Here is a picture of my cute little crafty helper for this video. We had so much fun making these new little fun party crafts and here is the first one so from Dollar Tree you're going to want to get some of these candy dishes we made several but you'll need two for each candy that you want to make you take one of them and simply just pile in whatever candy you want it we got an assortment from Dollar Tree then you're going to put the other candy dish on top and just tape them together you can tape downward or sideways it was easier to tape downward since I had little hands helping me but these dishes do come in several different colors. So for this next step, I use these gift bags from Dollar Tree. They come through to a pack. They have this assortment pack, and they also have a three pack of jack-o'-lanterns. You could use this, or you could use a principal, or you could just draw on some white paper or use napkins, whatever you like. I just cut one side of the bag out and remove the handle at the top. I will say this idea is inspired by Bargain Bethany. She did hers differently, but it inspired me to do this. We're having a fun little Halloween party one of my sons wants to throw for his friends. So these are his crafts. We're just going to tape the bag on and we are using invisible tape. It does show a little bit. If that bothers you, you could use a glue stick. Honestly, we weren't too worried about it. This is just a fun little kitty craft. Um, but if that bothers you again just use something that you won't see I used some of this curly ribbon from Dollar Tree to decorate some of the sides of my candy bowls and here is what they look like they are so fun my son is so excited to share these at his party and I think the kids will be really excited too these only cost me a couple dollars each to make and you don't have to just put candy in them you could cook put little bags of chips or little bags of snacks or even other kind of favors. So the sky is really the limit for that one. The next one is super cute and fun as well. Another party idea. This one is inspired by Olivia's romantic home. Again, she does hers differently than mine, but I used some plates from Dollar Tree, a tablecloth from Dollar Tree, and some balloon sticks from Dollar Tree. You're gonna wanna lay out two of the party plates and to one, you'll just put whatever candy or filler that you want and then tape the other plate on top upside down. Just leave a little space for your balloon stick. So for my first little lollipop, I did cut the balloon stick in half um, and then I discovered that it was easier to just leave it whole and just kinda of shove it all the way up and that made it a lot sturdier. So hopefully that makes sense here. I cut this one in half, but I would recommend just shoving the whole thing in there all the way up to the top and that will make it more stable. I did put some tape around that little stick there. Then I just cut a really large piece of doubled over tablecloth and I folded it down and taped it. The easiest way that I found to do this to get a smooth front so I could draw a face was to wrap this around like a gift. I just wrapped first one side and then the other taping as I went. Again, this is totally optional. You could do it any way that you like if you have an easier way this just worked for me again I was doing this with a little kiddo so I just showed him this way and he did a lot of these so once you're done with that this is what it will look like I gather up the bottom just using a little curly cue from that ribbon piece from Dollar Tree tie it as tight as possible then I'm going to flip this back over to the side that has tape on it that's going to be my back obviously and I'm going to fold down those little corners at the top to make this look more rounded. Again, if you have a special way to make this seamless and rounded, go ahead and do that. But this works out really well if you have kiddos. So here's what that looks like. And then we just put some faces on the front. If I forgot to mention, the plates do come eight to a pack, so you can make four of these very inexpensively, and the tablecloth makes several. So you can make a whole bunch of these as party favors. I think they are so fun, or if you wanted to hand them out at Halloween, um, it's just a great idea and very inexpensive and easy to do. Now I'm just going to show you real quick my little puppy. She's growing so fast, playing with my older dog, but here is her Halloween costume 
costume. She's going to be an adorable, glitzy little hot dog. My son Elliot picked out this costume for her. Um, yes, it keeps slipping to the side, and yes, she wants to eat it, but I think that it is absolutely adorable, and they look so cute together, so I just wanted to share that. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump right into the next idea. I am going to show you how to create a spooky neighborhood with Dollar Tree items. So to begin, you will need something long and skinny for your base. I grabbed this Give Thanks sign from Dollar Tree and split it down the middle with a box cutter. And I'm going to attach these two pieces to make it thicker. I then grabbed a garden fence from Dollar Tree. I cut the stakes off the bottom and I cut the plastic pieces off of the sides. I then went back to my Give Thanks sign and glued these two pieces together with generous amount of hot glue to form that long skinny base that I need. Once I have that done, I then grab my other items I need for this DIY. So I grab a package of these Dollar Tree craft cubes and I also grab three wooden houses from Dollar Tree have about five different designs of this house. So I just grabbed the three that I like the most. I am going to stand them up on this long skinny sign and use these wood cubes to adhere them to the sign. So I just make sure I have some hot glue um, on the part of the cube that attaches to the house and also the part that attaches to the sign. I'm going to stand one house on either end and then for my third house I'm going to place that in the middle of overlapping in the front so that I can glue the little sides that touch the other houses down for even more stability. Once I get this all in place, I'm going to glue wood cubes all along the back of this long skinny sign. Then I'll add a dab of hot glue on each cube and stand my garden fence up pressing firmly so it attaches to the back of my sign. Once everything is done and all set, this is what it looks like. I spray paint it with some black Rust-Oleum spray paint. Then I grab these little foam bones from Dollar Tree and also these little hay bales to decorate the front of my neighborhood. I'm going to put some hay bales kind of randomly, three in one spot, two in another, one on either side, just do how you like. Then I glue some of these foam bones together in an X formation. I put some on there separately. A couple of them I break in half and glue down. This is really customizable to however you like. Then I take some Waverly Plaster Chalk Paint on a brush and just distress the front of my houses. I also distress that garden gate just to give it an old and vintage look. I tuck some string lights down between the houses and the fence and here is what it looks like. I think this is absolutely adorable, very customizable, very inexpensive using a Dollar Tree items and this really only cost us a few dollars. You could make this longer by attaching more signs and houses. Do whatever you like. Please let me know what you think about this one down below in the comment section. Okay, so here real quick, I wanted to share some DIYs. I have just posted a new Halloween video with 10 Halloween fun DIYs, and I really don't think a lot of you got to see it. I'm not sure what happened, but I was really proud of some of these super easy, beginner-friendly, mostly Dollar Tree DIYs. So I'm just showing you here the things in that video, and if those things interest you, I'm going to have that video linked in my description box. So you can go ahead and watch these DIYs as well as the ones I am sharing today. There's still lots of time before Halloween for crafting, so I want to make sure all these ideas get out there. This next Dollar Tree DIY is super fun and easy to create as well. There are so many different ways to make a witch's hat, but here is how I made this one. So I grabbed a Dollar Tree poster board and began rolling it up into a cone shape. Once you get the shape that you want, you just take the end piece of that poster board and glue it down. I also glue down the seam. Then to make this stand up, I kind of pinch the bottom together and give it a trim. Then I pinch in the opposite direction and trim that as well. I then test to see if this will stand up flat and kind of trim as 
needed. It does not have to be perfect. So then I'm going to take a Dollar Tree pizza pan and I'm going to put glue all along the edges. I'm going to flip it over on top of some more of this black poster board and I'm going to cut all the way around so that when I flip this back over, my pizza pan will be entirely covered in this black poster board. I am then going to measure where I'm going to put that hat, create little holes. Then I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to cut this part out. I want my hat to be attached to the pizza pan and not just the poster board because I want this to be sturdy. So I just go ahead and trace that out. And then I use generous amounts of hot glue to attach this cone shape, which is the top of my hat into that pizza pan. Once that is done, I take some of this Dollar Tree Buffalo Check Ribbon, I tie a piece around the front, and then I decide I want to add a little bit more to give it kind of a wavy look. So I just glue it down and kind of twist it around the bottom part of my cone, gluing down here and there. Then I just complete the hat and glue down the end, trimming off any excess, and I begin on my bow. I use this beautiful velvet ribbon dollar tree to create an X formation with two loops on either side. I then use a zip tie to tie it tightly in the middle so that I can fluff it up. I trim off any excess of zip tie and ribbon. Once my bow is done, I can attach that to my hat at the base of that cone. I then create another bow the same way with some more of that buffalo check ribbon, and I attach it directly into the middle of my purple velvet bow. Once that is done, I take some of these foam roses from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use the black and white as well as the purple to decorate this. I put a few of them around that bow and I also put a few of them at the top of my hat but this is totally customizable. I use this little welcome to our haunted home sign from Dollar Tree that comes to to a pack and I just bend the wire around that cone shape so this stays in place. I then take some Waverly plaster chuck paint on my brush and I go all around this hat to give it a light distressing to give it an age look that is absolutely optional and then I take this little sanding sponge and sand around the outside of my hat and here is what it looks like a freestanding witch's hat I think it is absolutely adorable and super customizable okay here is another idea this one is Dollar Tree as well and it is a pumpkin bottom skeleton so here is what it looks like i think it is so so cute let's jump right into making it you will need to grab a pumpkin from dollar tree i just grabbed a black one um, but if you can't find a black one you can always paint it black then i grabbed a skeleton from dollar tree as well i cut the top off of my pumpkin using my exacto knife very carefully and then just removed that part there is kind of an end in so you can see right where you should be cutting to get a perfect circle on the top. I then added a piece of Dollar Tree floral foam and I cut the little hanger off the top of my skeleton's head. I then went ahead and removed his legs as they are very, very long, but we will still be using part of them. Now I'm going to push my skeleton down into the floral foam as good as I can and glue around him for some added stability. Then I'm going to fill the front, back, and sides of that little hole where my skeleton is popping out from with some floral moss from Dollar Tree. This adds kind of a spooky look and it also helps your skeleton stand firmly. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more to the front just to get the perfect look that I want. I really want it to look like he's surrounded by this pile of moss. So once I get that exactly the way I want it, I'm going to break these legs in half. They are jointed, so the bottom part just pops right off. And then I'm going to make little holes in the front of my pumpkin using my X-Acto knife, 
to get the hole started and then just pushing the bone of the leg right through that hole. I do want to add though that you want to be very careful with this DIY um, and use some finger protectors if you have them on hand when you're pushing down the floral moss with the hot glue or it is very likely that you may burn yourself. Um, I honestly am so used to getting burnt and my finger protectors always run away. So, however, I then glue a little bit of moss around where the legs meet the pumpkin, and then I decided to give it a little bit of a moss hat with some hot glue and moss. But this is the quickest, cutest little um, DIY. I think it is just so adorable, and I hope that you like it too. Let's create a Dollar Tree eyeball garland that is perfect for outdoors or indoors. I grabbed three packages of these Dollar Tree eyeballs that come 12 to a pack. I also grabbed some twine. So to begin, I am going to firmly hold the eyeball between my fingers and press the glue gun down until the tip pokes through and it creates a hole. I'm going to do this to both sides of my eyeballs and then I'm going to use a piece of jute twine that I had put some masking tape on the end to act as a needle. And I'm going to, hi Diana, that's my bulldog you guys. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to push that piece of twine through all of these eyeballs and then once I get the length of garland that I desire, I like to just tie a loop in the end so that I can um, hang it if I desire but you can make this as long or as short as you want and I think it is perfect for a mantle or a bush or a fall tree just so cute and inexpensive here is what it looks like on my bush outside with some creepy cloth okay let's jump right in to our next idea so for this next one, I thought it would be fun to make a stack of cats. So I'm using Dollar Tree items to create this little stack. And I actually give two options because here in the beginning when I'm showing you what I'm using, I show this merry and bright sign from Dollar Tree. I was thinking of lining up the cats on top of it. I decided not to do that. So you'll see what I do here. But to begin, I place four cats down and onto the back of each one, I hot glue a jingle ball. I then apply more hot glue on the other side of that Jenga block and sandwich the Jenga block between two cats. So for each of my cats, it has a double side. Okay, so then I choose a dowel rod from a pack that I got from Walmart. The Dollar Tree does sell dowel rods if you are lucky enough to find them. I place my cats on one side of the dowel rod with some hot glue. I'm also filling in the hole at the top of my cats with some hot glue as I did not have any wood filler. As you can see, I'm facing my cats in opposite directions and kind of tilting them so that this is just kind of a fun, wonky, sideways little stack there. And once everything is hot glued down and attached, then I can go ahead and paint. As you can see, I also added some hot glue to where the cats attach as well as the dowel, just to make sure that this is sturdy. I then paint the entire thing with a spongy brush and some black paint from the Dollar Tree Crafters Square section. You could paint before you assemble. It's just easier for me to do it this way. I had a crate that I had already painted with Waverly plaster, and the crate already had a piece of floral foam in it, so I just put my cat arrangement down in there. I grabbed some black yarn from Dollar Tree and filled up the box as well as some of these foam bones from Dollar Tree. I then took some of this bat ribbon from Dollar Tree and cut off the wired sides and glued it down to the front of my box just to add a little bit of decoration. Here is what this looks like. Let me know what you think about this one. And moving right into the next DIY to make some embellishments for our main DIY by grabbing up this package of cauldrons from Dollar Tree. There's four to the pack and then use any fabric that you have on hand um, or anything you have on hand that you can dummy up the bottom with. I just used some of the excess t-shirt and then I filled the top with some hot glue. I also allowed hot glue to drip down the sides the way I wanted it. I was concerned at first that the hot glue may melt the cauldron, but it did not. So here is what it looks like. I allow this to dry completely, and then I apply another 
coat or another layer of the hot glue on top and dripping down the sides. This gives you a really cute 3D look and some dimension. I then paint that. Any green color will do. I use the green by Folk Art. I do three coats of my paint, allowing it to dry in between each coat, and you have some cute, gooey little cauldrons. So this goes with this idea, these adorable little witches stirring a potion. So I grabbed up these two wooden witch forms from Dollar Tree, and I am going to be placing them like so. But first, I need to paint them both black with my Waverly ink chalk paint. I grabbed a creepy cloth from Dollar Tree and I just cut a couple of little pieces off of that creepy cloth. I'm just going to drape them over my witches um, so that it looks kind of like she's wearing a tattered old robe. Um, just be careful that you have your witches on the right side so that their cauldrons will overlap. <laughs> so here I am just gluing down that creepy cloth and arranging um, it and then I am going going to place some little strips of burlap that I had cut all over to again add to this tattered look. I even placed one on her hat but that is optional and then I just kind of cinch her little robe in the middle with a piece of twine. I just tie it tightly to kind of um, cinch everything together and just add a little bit of accent. So I do both of my little witches the exact same way. I just trim off the excess twine glue it down so it doesn't move around on me and then I place a little tiny twine bow there on that little belt. Now I'm just going to place a little bit of twine around the brim of the hat. I go around about three times and then I just glue down the twine and place another little bow at the top of the hat. So here are my two witches. They are ready. Now I'm going to go ahead with one of them. I am going to use generous amount of hot glue on the very top to form my potion. I I am also going to make big drips down the front of my cauldron with this hot glue. Now you can do this however you like. I did a pretty dramatic potion with lots of drips. I allowed it to dry completely just like I did with those little cauldrons before then going ahead and painting it with the same green color that I used on my cauldrons. But again, you can use any color that you like, um, even purple or a different color would be pretty. Once that is all dry, I grab a few Tumbly Tower blocks from Dollar Tree that I painted black as well, and I'm going to place two of them on top of one of the cauldrons, add some hot glue, and attach the other one on top so that my cauldrons are overlapping. I then grab these two 12-inch wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I had painted them black and I glued them together, but you can use any base that you like. I used my remaining tumbling tower blocks behind my witches to stand them up. I also stuck one under that front cauldron for some more stability. I glued a small cauldron on either side as I had a little bit of room on my base and then I grabbed a couple of these little skeletons that come in a garland from Dollar Tree and I kind of chopped them up a little bit um, and kind of glued a skull here and kind of a leg there, an arm there, just to really spooky this up. If you don't want this that spooky, you can totally skip that step or Dollar Tree also sells them glittery foam bones whatever you like but I thought that this came out really cute I also added a tiny dot of green to each chin to be like the little wart on my witch but this is so so customizable to any way that you like it more spooky less spooky change the colors out the materials out embellishments out but it comes out so cute please let me know what you think so for our next DIY that I'm going to share today here is a super fun ghost garland using Dollar Tree items. So first you will want to grab up a t-shirt from Dollar Tree. I found one that was 4X and this was absolutely perfect because it gave me a lot of material to work with. So to begin, I spread it out and then I folded it over. When you fold it over, you actually have four pieces of material stacked up. So here is what I did. Then I trimmed off that hem there and my cuts are not perfect because I do need new scissors but that is okay you totally can't tell once our ghosts are assembled so now I'm going to make a cut under the armpit line in that pocket there so I have a big piece of fabric 
And then I'm going to cut this piece in half and then I will be cutting those pieces in half. So we're going to end up with 16 pieces of fabric if you do it this way. Then one more cut. Okay, so here's what we have. Of course, you'll need to cut each one of these pieces in the middle. So if that was hard to follow, really any way that works for you to cut this down, you just want squares of fabric. So like I said, I end up with 16 doing it this way and I just spread them out, cut them, and here's my squares. Now I I'm going to use these little styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree that come for to a pack. However, you can use whatever you like, even ping pong balls would work. I place a little ball in the middle of my fabric and I do use two pieces of fabric for each ghost. I place my fabric in opposite directions, but you can just use one if you want. I just really like the full look at the bottom. I tie it tightly with a piece of jute twine and tie a little bow there in the middle. I repeat this process eight times for some small ghosts. I then make a couple of larger ghosts that are perfect for a tear tray or just any space that you want a spooky little ghost. So easy peasy, just tie the top tightly and then you can fluff and arrange your bottom any way that you like it. You can also, if you don't want to add these bows, you can just tie the twine and add a different bow if you like. So this is a very, very customizable project. So for the Two larger ones I'm just going to be using the chest pieces here and again there'll be two pieces of fabric on either side so I'm cutting out the chest pieces and doing the exact same thing you just have a bigger ghost with a longer tail here and then here's the comparison and then I'm going to take my sharpie and I'm going to draw three little dots two for the eyes and one for the little screaming mouth. However, you can do whatever faces you like or you can do different faces on some of them. All of mine came out a little tiny bit different because of the folds in the fabric, but I think they all came out super cute. Now you need a needle and some jute twine or whatever you want to string your garland onto. I did not have a dowel needle, which is recommended for this project. So I just used the biggest needle that I had. I pushed it through the foam and then I used use these little pliers to pull it out the other side and that worked for me. I strung all eight of my ghosts onto this jute twine and then I took some burlap strips that I had but you could use ribbon or fabric and I just tied one in between each ghost just to add a pop of color and some farmhouse charm. Again absolutely customizable beads, fabric, ribbon, whatever you like. So when that is done I'm just going to tie a loop on either end so that I can hang this if that is how I choose to display it and then our adorable little ghost garland will be good to go. This is such a cute inexpensive project especially if you can find a very large t-shirt from Dollar Tree with lots of fabric. So here is what it looks like displayed on my bushes but the sky is the limit in ways you could display this. Okay now for our next idea let's create a little ghost using a Dollar Tree wooden cutout. This is a wooden ghost cutout from Dollar Tree painted with Waverly plaster. I also use these felt sheets from Dollar Tree. So originally I used this yellow piece of felt for behind the eyes and mouth of my ghost. In the final reveal, you will see that I changed this to black, but there's a couple of options for you. So I just put some glue on the back of the ghost's face and placed down a piece of the felt. I then trimmed off the excess. Then I began to decorate by taking some Dollar tree rub on transfers and just choosing the ones that I wanted. I cut them out and placed them on to my ghost and then just use my fingernail to rub them down. These go on really easily and you can use your fingernail or a tool and I just put as many as I wanted on this little ghost very customizable and then I put trick-or-treat on the tummy there. I replaced the piece of jute twine for the hanger and then I formed a little bow for her head just using a spare piece of Dollar Tree black felt ribbon that I had. I just folded it over, bunched it in the middle, and then adhered it to her head at an angle with some hot glue. 
And I then added a little jute twine bow to the middle of that larger bow because I thought that looked super cute. Now again, in the final reveal, she will have black behind her eyes and mouth, but you can do this any way you want. And here's what she looks like displayed with some other things that we made in today's video. Just a cute little piece, and I hope you like this one. And now for our next idea let's make a garland so you're going to want to grab up one of these little spider webs from dollar tree i'm going to be removing the tinsel and also this glow in the dark spider i'm going to keep it for another diy in the future i'm just going to snip this tinsel in various places and it is wrapped on to some little hooks there that are on this form so I, once i figure that out i just start kind of unwrapping it and then i grab some Dollar Tree black yarn and I began wrapping it all around the outer edges of this web. I am also using the little hooks on this web to hold my yarn in place. I'm going to cover the entire form in this yarn. It really didn't take me that long at all. And I just like the look of the yarn better than the tinsel. But if you like the tinsel, go ahead and leave that. Whatever suits your fancy. So I'm just going down the middle. And every once in a while, I did add a little tiny dab of hot glue just to hold things in place the way that I wanted them. And just kind of looping around those little tabs that you can see. Um, and once it's covered, this is what it will look like now i'm just going to go ahead and take an extra piece of that yarn and lay it down um, because i'm going to use it to tie on these beautiful dollar tree purple roses so i'm just placing two how i want them tying them on with this piece of yarn um, but you can use any type of flower that you like or any color very customizable i'm adding a little tiny dab of hot glue to get it to hold on i'm repeating the same process on the other side and then in the middle i am placing some more leaves and another rose. I'm taking some of these foam roses from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to be using the white and black foam roses with tiny dabs of hot glue. I'm just attaching them here and there just to add a little bit more um, fanciness to this. And again, this is optional. I just think it uh, makes it up a little bit cuter, takes it up another level, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then once that is done, you can decorate the rest of this however you like. I honestly I thought this was a little spider rings but it ended up being little bat rings which I thought was fine I just cut off the ring part and attached the bat by adding a little tiny bit of hot glue to the back of each bat and attaching it right to the web I then took one of these sparkly purple picks from Dollar Tree and just cut the pieces off and glued them here and there just to add another little bit of accent to my wreath. I form one of my expos with this same bat ribbon just by folding it over until I have two loops on either side. And then I just took a piece of that little tinsel that I had pulled off of this web and used that to wrap around the middle of my bow tightly so that I can fluff my bow out as I always say the tighter you tie the middle the more you can fluff your bow out once that is done I attach it with a little bit of hot glue where I think it looks pretty and that is pretty much it again this is so customizable to however you want but this was a quick easy and a fun project I hope that you like it and my next and final idea for you Let's create a cute arrangement with these succulents using a skull as the pot. So another craniotomy, you guys. Grab up the skull from Dollar Tree, grab your X-Acto knife or your box cutter, and just go ahead and cut out the top part of that skull. I kind of did a rectangular shape, um, but it doesn't matter exactly. It doesn't have to be precise. You just want a large piece in which you can shove some floral foam down into the skull. So here's what it looks like. I'm just making it a little bit bigger here so I have a bigger area and then just taking a piece of floral foam and putting it down in there placing it down in there the way I want it I actually ended up using a couple of little pieces there just to fill it out and then I'm just going to grab up some succulents that I had in my stash I do um, arrange this a bit so you'll see it looking a little bit different um, here and there but again this is another piece to just have fun with and do however you like Dollar Tree does care 
very succulents in little pots and also succulent clips. So those are some really good affordable options for you. Once you get it how you like it, I then go around in between my succulents and all around the edges of the hole in the top of the head with this Dollar Tree moss. Um, here you want to see I added in another larger succulent. But once I did that, of course, my head was off balance. So I did place a couple of tumbling tower blocks um, at the bottom of the skull just to help it stand up and not topple over because it was slightly off balance. So here is how I went ahead and did that. And then I just held it until it was completely dry. I'm not sure why I had to show you that whole thing. I apologize. So I did use another tumbling tower block underneath the chin. Um, and then I'm going to come in with some of this floral moss and attach it with hot glue to cover up these pieces. I used one bag of floral moss for all of my DMs. DIYs today and here is what this looks like. I just think it's really cute and adorable but again very customizable. Place any florals in here that you like. I truly hope that you enjoy these DIYs today and got some inspiration. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. See you soon friend. You can subscribe to my mom's channel and thank you for watching today's craft and stay safe.